Hello and welcome. In this presentation I would like to introduce you to Killware. Is it the next evolution in malware or not? Let me start by introducing myself. My name is Henk Geurts. I've been around for a long time and I started my career in cable TV. Then I switched my career to the LT Multiv equipment, diagnostic, exhaust, wheel alignment, those kinds of things. Basically my third career was in telecommunication and burglar alarm. Involved cameras as well. It was also the first time I get in contact with networking. During this time I got involved in pioneering with voice over IP. Ended up in a data center, did a lot of experience over there. All this experience came to use in the Hushman industrial network environment. Just like any other technology, attacks are evolving as well. First you had viruses, worms, rootkits, SQL injection, then there was scareware, basically did nothing, just scare you to pay money. Scareware became ransomware, ransomware became double extortion. So what is killware? Killware is basically ransomware that threatens to hurt or kill people. It's weaponizing technology. It's evolution of ransomware extortion. For now, killware seems to focus on OT, food and beverage industry, drink water production, infrastructure and chemical plants. If you're reading all this, one question comes to mind. Why do people do this? Well, companies know how to handle ransomware. The double extortion only works with sensitive data. By giving companies less time to respond to the threat, increases the chances of getting paid. And the most important, it puts higher pressure on the payment terms, less room for negotiation. So how does it work? Well, basically like any ransomware attack, many attack factors are possible, specifically focused on SCADA or ICS. Attackers try to change the product so it's not according to specifications, to the point where it even becomes dangerous, could possibly kill, kill people. Companies should be aware of supply chain attacks. If the raw material is changed, you might end up with a dangerous product to the point where it hurts or even could kill people. The last possible attack is where they mix raw materials to a possible hazardous level. A logical question would be, can we prevent a killware attack? Well, it's ransomware, so you can use the same preventions. Audit your accounts. Specifically try to notice accounts no longer in use. Accounts with elevated rights that no longer need them. Those kinds of things. Check your system for bad passwords. Those are default passwords. Easy passwords, common passwords. You don't want to use them. Limit the access rights. Nobody needs admin rights all the time. And try to prevent the use of admin accounts if possible. If you must, try to enable multi-factor authentication. Ah, my favorite subject. Being a network guy, I love network segmentation. Almost all malware is trying to spread itself over the network. By using network segmentation, you can make it harder, uh, or possibly even impossible, for the malware to, to spread and make a habit out of monitoring your network. By monitoring your network, you can identify suspicious behavior. The last one is update. I know it is hard in an industrial environment. You know it works, you don't know if it works the moment you update. But please, update, update, update. Update the servers, update the SCADA, update the industrial control system, update your PLCs. It's absolutely necessary. If update is not possible, I know a lot of you guys are running on Windows 2003 servers, I know it's the industry, I know... But if update is not possible, please use next generation firewalls. Next generation firewalls know a technique that's called virtual patching, that might help a lot as well. Suppose, a worst case scenario, you have been attacked, there is killware on your system, there is ransomware on your system. How do you recover from that? First of all, make backups and make sure that the backups are tested. And don't stop at one backup, make multiple and test them. Store them in a safe location. Store them in various locations and test them. What everybody seems to forget is to store the configuration of your PLCs. Store the configuration of your network. Store the configuration of your SCADA or your industrial control system. You may ask why? 
Well, it's basically quite simple. Suppose the attack is very severe and there's no way you can restore your system from a backup. If that happens, then you have to rebuild from scratch. And rebuild from scratch is a pain in the, well, you know. Having the configuration stored might save you a lot of trouble. As always, management support is the most important. Work together with management on a disaster recovery plan. Think about outsourcing your monitoring to a SOC, a security operations center. Those guys are specialized in monitoring for security events, are manned 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, and can alert you as soon as possible. Oh, and secure emergency funding. If you need to buy equipment to recover something, you don't want to buy this from your personal credit card. So it's important to secure emergency funding so you can buy if it's necessary. So what should you do? Well, first of all, don't panic. There's no reason to panic. Nothing happened yet. Try to control the amount of raw materials. If you need a certain amount of product A, a certain amount of product B and a certain amount of product C, well, if product C might be dangerous, stock it for one day, not for a total month. If it's possible, try to separate your production lines. Certain materials that might be hazardous if they combined should not be in the same production line if possible. Make sure you have strict quality assurance on your suppliers as well as on your end products. It sounds logical, but a lot of, a lot of companies don't think about that. And please look into the IEC 62443, formerly known as the ISA 99 and the NIST SP882. And those are really good guidelines if you want to secure your production. So what is the goal of all of this? Well, I hope you remember the bowtie model. The bowtie model is if something happens, you try to prevent a hazardous event. You try to prevent that a toxic product is leaving your company. But if it happens, you try to mitigate the effects. In the end, you want your customers to be happy. You want your customers to be safe. You want your company to exist for another thousand years. And you want to secure your work and your pension, of course. I thank you all. Hope this has been informative for you. I'll talk to you. Thanks.